The North Pole, a remote and very inhospitable part of this earth. It's unbelievably cold, a place of ice, snow and savage wind, known only to a few brave explorers and polar bears. In February and March 2009, a small team of three or four Australians hope to reach the North Pole, and here's how. The journey will be hazardous, negotiating those extremely cold and strong winds between Ward Hunter Island, Canada, and the very top of the planet. The distance, as the crow flies, if indeed it could given conditions, is about 800 kilometres. But the actual distance covered will be much more as sea currents push the team backwards, Finding ways through ice ridges and open leads are bound to force many deviations. The team, to be led by Linda Bailharts, plans to haul sleds with food, tents and clothing for approximately 60 days. Some of you know that Linda has already successfully undertaken two ice cap crossings and that this venture is part of her dream to travel on each of the world's four major ice caps. In 2004, Linda became the first Australian woman to have skied from the edge of Antarctica to the South Pole. Should this latest venture succeed, Linda will be the first Australian woman to have undertaken a journey to both poles. The journey will epitomise the classical challenges of human endeavour. Team members will have to draw deeply from their reserves of courage, determination, resilience and even hope. Relationships will be tested, as will each individual's ability to work together, especially during times of huge challenge. Each team member will experience intense highs and lows as freezing conditions inevitably clash with the beauty of the Arctic. Each will know the joy of gaining ground, the pain of losing ground, and the flood of emotional warmth generated by a cohesive and productive team effort. And think about this. Students in schools across Australia will be able to follow this journey and learn. Communications from the team will allow real-time provision of information. Just imagine team members reflecting on their experiences, their challenges and triumphs, providing students with a learning scenario that has no certain outcome. In other words, a true reflection of life's challenges. It is envisaged that the North Pole expedition will capture the involvement of many young people in the project through the creation of a documentary. This documentary will be shaped to promote good mental health, using the experiences of the expeditioners and the students themselves. Its production offers a rare opportunity to take part in real-life lessons about resilience. In fact, a team of mental health experts Researchers, policy makers and practitioners with an interest in the development of resilience and leadership will assist the team. And from this will come extremely useful key mental health concepts and messages. Of course, nothing is guaranteed except the sheer effort put in by team members in order to achieve their goal. With the experience of two polar expeditions already under her belt, Linda is presently researching and preparing her North Pole venture very thoroughly. She knows that team members will train in the Canadian Arctic and hone their skills by practicing swimming leads and hauling sleds over ice pressure ridges. And it's worth noting that this expedition will follow a precedent set by Linda Bailharts in previous adventures. It will be carbon neutral. Linda plans to utilise interest in her North Pole expedition to talk about and model greenhouse gas emission reduction and offsetting. The invitation to watch this short presentation was made in the hope that you might consider becoming a partner in this ambitious project. We wondered if you have the capacity to join the adventure. Could you find a way to share the adventure with your community, your staff, clients, perhaps your supporters. Do you have your own story of challenge, of courage, resourcefulness and determination that you can tell in parallel to the story of this adventure? Do you appreciate the importance of a journey such as this one? The uncertainty of attaining the goal, 
and the rewards of effort. We, of course, are looking to join with businesses and corporations who can build a true partnership with this project, who can share our vision and consequently benefit from shared aspirations and shared endeavour. As Linda has said when giving talks about her experiences on the ice caps, only by climbing the mountains or stepping out across the deserts or setting our sails at the empty oceans can we allow the wild places meaning in our lives and acknowledge their existence in our world. They give perspective to our values and make us readdress our responsibilities, both global and personal.